Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of the Asian Mint, our second episode featuring an interview. And today we are beyond thrilled to have Mr. Gabe Norwood. Uh, I could go on and on about his accolades, but I'm going to keep it simple. He's one of the best players to ever grace Philippine basketball. One of the guys who wore the Philippine name across his chest really proudly. He also had a really nice dunk you guys should check out on YouTube sometime. Uh, and also, he's just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Gabe, thank you for joining us. How are you doing, buddy? What's new? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Um, just looking forward to some info and, and sharing some insight. So I'm excited to be here. You're right, right. Yeah, so obviously the reason we're going to talk here tonight is Top Shot because I was so happy when Gabe told me he was into Top Shot because that means it's starting to get into the PBA. And, you know, it might ignite my dreams of starting like a PBA UAP version of Top Shot, but more on that <laughs> later. Uh, Gabe, before we get into the collecting part of it, just tell me, like, what you've been up to? What's up? You know, how's life? What you've been doing lately? Yeah, just trying to stay active, man. I think like everybody, uh, trying to make the most of the situation. Uh, I'm lucky. I, I'm blessed to have my, my wife and kids with me, so I'm not, you know, just, just going through it alone. But just trying to be creative. You know, they're, they're going through school, so I've taken on some different roles in that sense as, you know, history teacher and, and really just babysitter for my youngest son while my, my wife really handles a lot of that. But you see the plants behind me. The plants are doing well. They're, thri they're thriving, so... You know, just just trying to stay active and, and learn new things, I guess. I want to take this opportunity to say that when I talked to Gabe for my podcast a few months ago, he he just told me about his plans to like plans to start growing plants and like look at them now. Like he did a great job taking care of them, yeah. And I'm sure he, his uh, kids appreciate him acting like Jose Rizal, telling them about the history of the Philippines. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gabe, normally we like starting the interview about Top Shot by asking uh, the guys or girls, uh, what's your Top Shot story? And basically, this is a fancy way of asking, how did you get into NBA Top Shot? And more importantly, what got you to stay? Yeah, I mean, I had a friend of mine, like, this had, it was a while ago, I think when kind of just the buzz, the idea of, of Top Shot was uh, just getting out there. He, he had sent me a link, you know, he was heavy like into crypto and everything like that. So naturally those kind of articles fall into the same, you know, kind of kind of realm, you know what I mean? So sent me a, a, a link and I just kind of clicked it and left it alone for a while. Didn't pay too much mind to it. Uh, went about my business, went about my life. And then gradually just started seeing stuff on, on Twitter. So I was like, you know what? I'll follow NBA Top Shot on, on I'll follow them on Twitter for a while, see what happens. So, okay, I'll follow them on Instagram, see what happens. And just naturally, I think the visual of it, you know, it's a it's a very, very a, appealing platform, visually appealing platform uh, for guys who like basketball, like the NBA. So signed up, didn't touch anything for a while, same thing, you know, didn't buy any packs and then Eventually, just was like, man, forget it. Let me let me just go ahead and grab a couple couple moments and and go from there. But it's been cool. It's a cool cool platform, cool community as well. Um, just finding out who's into it and and really just building you know deeper friendships and relationships off of that. Were you one of those guys too who at first because we've all kind of been there and were you one of those guys at first too who was like. Why would I like spend twenty dollars in a highlight I could watch on YouTube? And if you were, like, how'd you get over that? For sure. I mean, I don't know if I'm completely over it to be honest. Like, I, I'm still at that point of like, like just wrapping my head around it. But there's still like FOMO and everything, right? Like, you don't you want want to be the last one in and things like that. So, you know, from an investment angle, you know, they always say don't invest what you can't lose, right? So, just try to take baby steps and things like that. But Naturally, as the platform seems to get more popular and and more people are talking about it, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's kind of happy you got in when you did, and and hopefully, you know, the, the way it keeps going. Uh, um, can I can I ask? Sorry, yeah, I'll just ask this real quick. How did your wife react when you told her you were gonna spend a bunch of money on like videos that you can watch on YouTube? <laughs> I mean, as long as I have like article factual backup i think i, I can make a, a pretty good presentation a pretty good argument you know i i have a little bit of leeway I, i'm not a, i'm not the flashiest of guy so i don't i don't spend a lot of money on a lot of stuff so i think i get a i get a pass every once in a while so have you converted her into a believer of top shot too she hasn't she hasn't jumped in too much she my, my kids will kind of peek over my shoulder every once in a while and, 
they're huge basketball fans. If anybody knows, my eldest is 10, um, middle son is eight, turning nine, and then my youngest is three. But they'll they'll sit down and watch NBA all day. So it's another way to just keep the, the NBA name uh, going in the family. First of all, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're so happy to have you. My pleasure. Uh, in the Asian Mint. Um, first of all, I want to suggest that uh, you make um, top shot uh, user uh, like profiles for your children, so that you'll have like a uh, higher chances oh, yeah, right, of winning right, right. like uh, packs, and eventually you can uh, like gain access to joining like rare uh, drops, like that. eventually uh, legendary <laughs> drops. Like it'll increase your odds. I didn't and, think uh, about that. And uh, they're uh, like real users, so they can pass the KYC. Right, yeah. <laughs> that is true. They definitely they have their own email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah you yeah. can make that work. Yeah, that's a good so, idea. Um, I wanted to ask, like, before Top Shot, were like, were you into crypto? Like, uh, were you uh, monitoring the what's happening with Bitcoin or like Ethereum? Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah, definitely... sorry. Just, just, just to add to what Marvin asked you, Gabe. Uh-huh. I also want you to say, were you also into the physical card collecting too? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I've i been in that probably since the pandemic hit. Like everybody, I think the, the rush kind of happened again with, with physical cards. Actually, probably more active with, with physical cards, to be honest, just in terms of, uh, you know, monitoring things, and watching breaks. And like the whole thing is like the community is totally different than what it was when I was a kid. And I just walked to the local card shop and buy a pack and, you know what I mean, walk out and, and that was about it. But um yeah, it's, it's, it's been cool just to see how different opportunities come about, whether like I'm in that weird in between with cards, like I, I don't know if I'm really collecting or I'm investing. So I'm just like same thing with Top Shot, you know what I mean? Like you, you find players that you don't want to let go of, but probably won't give you any value long term and things like that. But uh, yeah, it, it's kind of been a little bit of everything. Uh, crypto was introduced to me had to be almost five years ago, four or five years ago. Um, so just something, same thing, kind of just bought what I could and I'm not one to go like all out on stuff. So just gradually kind of build from there and, and kind of set it aside. And, I mean, it, it's worked out, you know, it, it's, it's, it's in a pretty good spot right now. Ram, anything to ask him? Yeah, no, I really want to learn about that portion, right? So you have a little bit in crypto, would you mind sharing maybe were the things that you decided to put a little bit of money in? Is it Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything unique? Yeah, most mostly mostly those two. Um, kind of, I, I think I got excited in the beginning because it seemed like so many different coins and like the the initial kind of push for their use cases and what they could be used for and things like that. Like, seemed like everything made sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> it didn't seem like anything was a, a bad buy. So I think I definitely probably overextended early, um, which I probably just have a tendency of doing. Uh, just, And then it just came to a point of consolidating down from really mostly probably 80% of what I have is probably Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then everything else is, you know, just hopefully get lucky. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that you talked about there are different use cases for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and blockchain. When you found out about Top Shot, did you already hear about being blockchain based and did that add value for you or did it detract a little bit? Yeah, that definitely, it it added value just in the sense of what it could possibly be. Like, you know, naturally you see the NBA logo on it. So I'm like, my mindset was like blockchain, NBA, like they have to have a plan for this. Like they wouldn't just put out a product. The NBA is a global brand, you know what I mean? They wouldn't just throw out a product just to just to do it. Uh, I think there's a, a plan and a vision moving forward. You know, for me, I was like, man, are they about to not allow NBA highlights on YouTube anymore? And you have to only watch them through top, you know what I mean? Like my mind was going all over the place like that. And um, I, I think definitely knowing a little bit about blockchain, um, watch enough documentaries and read enough, read enough articles to where you feel like you're an expert. And I'm definitely not that. Uh, I need to watch a couple more. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely was more appealing when I when I saw that. I wanted to share to Gabe that uh, most of uh, what I learned from like blockchain, like Bitcoin, like cryptocurrencies, I learned through videos in YouTube and like immersing myself like in Discord and in Twitter, mm. like uh, engaging with like other people, uh, 
who has like invested early on for like more like, experienced yeah. people and uh, learning from like uh, their mistakes or like what made them successful. So like uh, that usually uh, helps me in my decision making or like uh, what to look for in like an investment or like uh, in a cryptocurrency. Makes sense. And it's definitely like, like you said, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I forgot to mention when you hear, you know, the Sacramento Kings, how many years ago we're accepting, what was it, LTC, I think, or was it Ethereum? I can't remember. They were accepting something for like season tickets, like you could pay in, in crypto. And this was years ago. And now I feel like there's so many more, you know, sports teams, athletes themselves. You see Trevor Lawrence just signed with like Tops and he has his own NFT drop in. Evan Mobley, Mobley announces his, like he's entering the draft with the NFT and everything. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty cool. You know, when I think about that, it makes me realize that we are going to eventually have the same thing here in the Philippines. It's not really a matter of yeah. if, it's really a matter of when, because number yeah. one, we tend to copy what goes on in the Western world and bring it here. And number two, just because, you know, it, it makes sense, right? Uh, so when people ask me usually, hey, uh, Nav, so why should we invest into NBA Top Shot? Mm. And my answer most of the time is, well, think of the card collecting business, right? Uh, I never got into card collecting personally, but I always knew the money was lucrative. There was a lot of dough going around, right? And now you think about it, Top Shot is kind of doing the same thing. The only difference is they're kind of taking the 21st century approach to it, which is more digital, more virtual. So if you're able to think two, three years down the line instead of like two, three weeks down the line, you might be in a better position. And that also brings me to my next question, Gabe, which is, are you the type who likes checking how the prices go up and down every day? Or are you more of like, ah, oh, you know, let's give it a few days, maybe a few weeks, just so, you know, my mind doesn't go crazy. And maybe not only for Top Shot, but like, is this how you do it for your Bitcoin investments as well? My, my wife might say different, but I, I like to think I'm not, uh, I'm not too conscious of it. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, Top Shot, that's one thing with the platform. I think, I don't know if there was an upgrade on the platform recently or something that made it a little bit easier to um, kind of find pricing. Like, I think some of my early buys, I was just lazy and they felt like scrolling to find the lowest price. I was just like, man, this is close enough. Let me just, you know what I mean? So um, I think it's it's just a habit now to, to be a little bit more conscious of it. Not necessarily checking, you know, four or five times a day, but but definitely just taking a peek and getting an idea where things are at. Yeah, when I was hanging out with my family one time and I was too busy checking top shot prices rather than actually enjoying dinner, I knew I kind of had to put my phone down. But I get you. Uh, I'm curious, what are your thoughts about the current price dips? Because unfortunately, we still have a lot of new users who are undercutters. Like I was telling the guys yeah. this earlier, I found it astonishing, incredible that Top Shot has nearly 1 million users. And for the last premium pack drop, out of that 1 million users, only like 65, 68,000 were eligible because they had the requirements to join the pack. So you take, you think of the math there, it's like 6 to 7% of users are actually yeah. collectors or legit collectors. So do you see the whole undercutting, quick buck flipping thing eventually like improving once there are more collectors in the market? Or do you think it might take a while? I mean, I, I think it, I think it might take a while, you know, just especially, I mean, you look at just patterns, right? Like you got the playoffs coming, so it, it's going to be just a lot of hype and things like that. I think it'd be interesting to see how things go in the off season. Like if people are still really buying then then I think that's when you'll really know who collectors are or people who are even, even from an investment standpoint, right? Like when there's less talk that's usually when prices go down and, and people want to try to get in so I, I think it could be interesting that the real test could be in the off season uh, more so than than now you know i think it is kind of is what it is you know if somebody gets hot and you know has that tyler tyler hero type of postseason like last year it, you're probably going to see a lot of the same for you know guys guys in that situation God knows I need Tyler to like start playing better, man. My mornings have been ruined as of late. Like, come, some of these losses are just like, I don't even have the words for it. And I'm a freaking writer. Uh, Ram, Marv, <laughs> anything you guys want to ask, Gabe? I just wanted to bring up, right, you mentioned the playoffs. And I think one of the 
it's gonna sound like a conspiracy theory somehow, so try to follow along here. But okay, what we've been seeing is that, of course, Dapper has made a couple of hires, including in, uh, the marketing head, and then we've been seeing some stress tests recently with these bigger size pack drops, right? Mm-hmm. Fifty thousand, hundred thousand uh, drops. They have a lot of funding. Playoffs is right there around the corner. Yeah. It makes me feel like, and this is just my speculation. That they're really preparing for an influx of more users. They're going to probably roll up some of that budget that they have for maybe advertisements during the playoffs. Yeah. We're probably going to expect influx of users, and there's probably going to be a lot more packs, which again dilutes the market, right? So, for you as someone who's on the platform, my question is: Are you looking for moments right now that you think you should be buying into before playoffs because you're expecting that hey, one of these guys could have that Tyler Hero kind of Cinderella run, or are you thinking maybe I should wait, I should pull back a little bit and wait for this influx of users, let them, as Naveen mentioned, some of them might come in and undercut, and then you can get at a better price. Yeah, I think it's it's probably a little bit of a combination, and and that's a, I I didn't even think about that approach of what you just said. It, it makes perfect sense. Like, I haven't seen a single commercial for for Top Shot. You know what I mean? Watching NBA TV or anything like that, and that's all it could take. You know, that or running the banner of, on the on the right next to the benches and things like that during the games, or you know, having the logo right there on the court. How they do sometimes stuff like that. So. It could get really interesting. There's there's definitely guys that, you know, I like. Probably a lot of the guys that I, I try to collect just with cards, right? You know, kind of the same approach. Um, you know, some Devin Booker stuff. And it, it's a tough spot, right? The, the Suns are playing so well in the West. It's hard to think that his price will go down at any point. But just overall, the whole rookie class this year hasn't had as much kind of hype and kind of attention you know like years past outside of Lamelo and Anthony Edwards that there weren't guys who were like consistent names all season uh, I personally like Tyrese Maxey I'm just like a, a fan I like how he plays uh, kind of feels like this year's version of SGA to me like uh, uh, Shea Gillis Alexander so you know naturally I, I'd like to see the Sixers go go deep in the playoffs but his prices come down a little bit or just overall have more moments um, there's not a lot of his moments out there, so that, that's one guy. Are you in the 76ers train for the season? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. So the other team not. you're looking for? <laughs> I mean, I just enjoy I enjoy good basketball, man. I, I moved around so much in the states uh, as a kid. I, I never really had a team, right? So you know, I'm I'm all for sitting down with the kids and, and watching good basketball. Right, right. While we're on the topic, like. Tell me what makes Luca special, because you hear all of these things about how special Luca is, right? But as someone who is known for being a premier defender, um, if you were defending him, what would keep you up at night the most? What part of his game would keep you up at night? I mean, I think the biggest thing is he doesn't seem to get uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like he he's been in the moment since he was a teenager, so it, it's he's seen it all. Uh, he's seen it all, and. At his young age, he's still able to go out. He's playing every night. He's playing through bumps and bruises and things like that. Guys trying to rough him up, and you know, I still wish they would have got a, a an enforcer. They got rid of James Johnson. I thought they had a, like a bodyguard for him, but all right. Uh, but Lucas just—he's tough to rattle, and uh, you know, naturally, all you see all everything else. You know what I mean? You see the playmaking ability. You see the the way he's shooting the ball even better this year. Um, creating for others naturally you know just me being me you'd like to see more on the defensive end but that's not what he's called to do that's not his role and you know he understands what he brings to the table so he's must see tv as well you got a luca moment yet i don't i haven't gotten lucky yet (laughs) (laughs) marv you had a question um gabe so who are your like uh, top three favorite players to watch right now Man, like, my um, top three favorite players to watch. Yeah, like uh, most entertaining for you. I mean, man, just three. Uh, I like, I like yeah, job. Just three, just three. Yeah. I like job. I, I feel like, yeah. I was, I was gonna say, um, I was an Iverson fan growing up, and I, I think he's close to it. Man, matches a city perfect. He's a culture mover. Um, I, I think. 
I think Jaws is, is fun to watch, even on his off nights. Game, you know, he doesn't hasn't shot the ball extremely well. He's picked it up here in the last few weeks, but um, he's fun to watch. Uh, had the pleasure of watching Devin Booker in Madison Square Garden play the Knicks a couple years ago, and he makes basketball easy. It, it's it's crazy, like. He makes it so like it, I was sitting there and I'm still a pro and I'm like mad watching him play because he makes it look so easy. That guy scores on and off the court, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he stays he stays winning, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he's in that that, that Luca mode for me. He he you can't get him uncomfortable. Um, he plays at his own pace and he, he's fun to watch. So those two and man, goodness. I, third there's so many players out there goodness yeah. i mean tatum it, it'd probably be a toss-up with tatum yeah. Kate, a, a, a healthy kd and you know it's hard to throw brown out of the mix you gotta you gotta have right. brown in there yeah yeah so um they tell us your best uh backdrop experience yet like was there one of those drops at like 3 4 a.m where you got up and Maybe like your son or your wife wondered like, what are you doing up so early or so late? I think, man, I tried to explain it one time. I forget what drop it was. And it was one of those like, I had no chance, like no <laughs> chance. I think it was like the first one I entered. And I was like, I forget what, where I was or how many slots were left. And I was like, man, let me just wait it out. Let me wait it out. And I think I ended up staying up until like 5.30. And I wasn't wow. even close. I was like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> I'm clear, like, the numbers there are looking right at my face. There's no way I'm going to make it. Like, <laughs> but, you know, I think that's it's the fun thing, right? Like, it's kind of like camping out for shoes, for shoe drops and things like that. It, it's, you know, you're not the only person doing it. <laughs> but you you were able to score the uh, the All Star pack, right? The yeah, rare, I, wow. I think you have a CP3 or a Go Bear. Yeah, I got the CP3, the CP3 Dunk. So I yeah. like to see, I like to think CP3 Duncan should hold some value long term. Oh, but, definitely. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, yeah, uh, I think I. Go ahead. Like you can probably count uh, in like your hand, like the times. Uh, Chris Paul dunk in game, right? Right. Like probably like uh, he had the one early. He could, did he dunk on Dwight Howard? Yeah, he, he dunked on Dwight yeah. Howard. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Everyone like, dunked on yeah. Dwight Howard. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, so how was that experience? Like uh, you lined up, I'm sure, and yeah. after seeing that you made the cue, was there that you know happiness inside you? Yeah, and actually that that rush, it was that I was that childhood kid at the card shop again, you know, yeah. walking out of the store. I didn't want to open the pack in the store. I had to walk, like on my walk home, I was opening it up. But um, yeah, it was fun. You know, the the mystery of it, I, the whole display on how the, you know, the moment kind of pops up on the screen and and goes from there. It, it's fun. Um, for a while, I didn't really when I the first pack, I was just cool with the moments i didn't think serial numbers i wasn't you know what i mean i, I wasn't yeah. really just knowledgeable of that so when i saw i, I think i hit i think it was the chris paul all-star i think i had like a tatum i think the the jason tatum like behind the back assist that he had yeah like, when he was saving the ball I, I think i got those in the same pack and i was like yeah this i'm guessing i i, I did well for my money right there but <laughs> it, it was cool would you have been as happy if you got Vucevic instead of Chris Paul? I, I don't know if I would have been as happy. <laughs> it, definitely, it, it, de it definitely wouldn't be on my page anymore. That would be gone already. <laughs> Not to get Vuce. He's, he, he's balling, but uh, just got to be honest. Yeah, Chris, Chris Paul is in a different level. We'll leave it at that. Um, so, But also, I want to ask you, too, because you probably, when you opened the pack virtually, you took the button this time instead of like opening yeah. it. But did it bring that same feeling of, oh my God, I'm so excited to find out what's inside. And then when you see like it's Chris Paul, you're like, oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, for sure. If, if it's notable names, especially I think before I got a pack, I ended up, I bought some moments um, out of the market, marketplace, some individuals first. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of had an idea of like who might be, you know what I mean? A, a good pool rather than. Like naturally, you just think the biggest names would be the biggest pools, and a yeah. lot of it is like that. But there's also, you know, some guys who are more popular than others. So right. to have a, a Hall of Famer was it seemed like it was a good a good pool. Ram, go for it. 
You know, I was just going to comment, right? One of the things that I think a lot of people enjoy about the Top Shot experience is that when you get that pack, you're lucky enough to make it there, you've done the payment, and it's right there sitting in front of you. And the music, it's like it's really pumping you up like, hey, you know, this is going to be good. I, sometimes it sucks. We've seen some videos where, oh, who is it? The one that drew the same uh, player <laughs> thrice? Oh, oh my god. Wait, can I just share? I opened the pack and I got like two Daniel House Juniors. And I was just like not happy about it. Like, I mean, obviously, it's still like what, 10 bucks, I guess, if you sold both right now. But like, right. I mean, you, you stay up till 5 a.m. and you get two Daniel House Juniors. You know, it's not really like a good night's sleep after that. <laughs> right. But yeah, Ram, go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, actually, it's a good thing that you brought that up because one of the things I was going to mention, right, is that everyone's so pumped when they have those packs. And then, some the good thing about Top Shot so far is that no matter who you draw, even if they're quote unquote not great players, your EV positive or the expected value is still positive, right? Yeah. Um, right now, if you're assuming that every moment, every comment's like five dollars for a nine dollar base set, you're basically making six dollars minus the dapper fee, right? Right. But there are other platforms out there. I'm not sure if you've tried using some of the other ones like Street Fighter or the MLB one where. You can draw something, and then when you open it, you can actually you actually lose money because you're selling it for parts because you don't get someone good. So I was just oh, wondering, like, there are some people who I don't know how they do it, but they get these packs and then they keep it there. They're planning for that future case when Dapper allows you to sell these packs to other people. Right. And I don't know if that's something that you're interested mm. in into because maybe there's a future state where you're starting to get these EV negative ones where you can yeah. actually look on the pack drop. Or is that something where, you know, as you as a card collector, I don't care if I lose money. There's this excitement in opening a pack, so I'm going to open it regardless. No, I think that could probably hit right on the point that you were making earlier in terms of, of them putting out more, essentially more products, more moments, right? Like people are going to probably turn to kind of holding those, holding those packs. And it's the same thing with, with cars. People just buy the box and you know, they don't open it and, you know, the value goes up just off the mystery. Um, so that, that would be pretty crazy. Uh, I, I definitely don't have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> if it's there looking at me, I'm going to end up opening the pack and, mm -hmm. or the box or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a interesting way to invest as well, right? You know, just looking at Strictly from that point and, and the, the option and the possibility of of those packs especially you know everybody is looking still for series one moments and things like that and there's no way i can i'm, I'm reaching that right now <laughs> not not on any players that i'm interested at least but yeah if, if you had series one packs right now i'm sure somebody would yeah. probably cut a deal gabe <laughs> let's say hypothetical situation right let's say like uh let's say i'm uh i i tell you okay gabe you know like here's ten thousand not okay not ten thousand dollars here's like a two thousand dollars Invest it in Top Shot however you like. What would your game plan be? Man. Dude, I, I got to double check some prices right now. Oh, um, I mean, definitely, I think the, the smart thing to do is to go rookies. Uh, unless you're, you're going to, like, guaranteed Hall of Famers. Um, but usually that is probably out of the price range unless it's base level, right? Um, but I think rookies, especially, I like how they added the whole um, icons. Badges, uh, yeah, the, moments, the badges. I, I, I do like that, and I, I think it's going to be something they probably do even more down the road. Um, you know, getting more creative with those, uh, kind of just putting an extra stamp on your your investment. But I think rookies would be a, a, a safe bet to go. Uh, you know, top picks naturally, but you know, Tyrese Maxey isn't too bad either. <laughs> Um, for sure, for sure. I heard Nav say, what's your game plan? And I was like, wow, play on words there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, guys, uh, in a few weeks, they're going to like reveal hardcore, maybe. We're going to have a game plan for that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. for uh, sure. Yeah, so okay, Gabe, I'm gonna like play a video, okay? Okay. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna play the video. It's a highlight. Uh, and once I play the highlight, uh, I want, because this isn't in the marketplace yet, okay? So after I play this video, and let's say it does get to the marketplace, it's minted. Let's say let's keep it at like 1,000 in circulation, okay? 1,000. I want you to tell me what the lowest price should be, okay? You ready for this? We're gonna like have Gabe play some, um, yeah, let me share my screen real quick. 
The lefty, see? Oh, I that was the I first like, one. That was I a, like yeah. you went with the lefty. You went with the lefty first. That's my favorite, oh, my favorite dunk of all time, right there. Person, my own personal one. Oh, Damn. Man. Ooh. What did guy man. tell you after you dunked that? Did he tell you anything? Nah, I I, I don't remember. He fouled me. He should have said, "My bad." But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. Young That's legs, a classic. Young legs. Mm. Good times. Can I just ask you, when you were about to take off, were you already in the mindset like, I'm just going to like yam this home on this guy? Oh, for sure. For sure. I, I didn't, I don't even know if I saw who it was. Um, like, I think we've talked about this before. It, it, it was like the perfect scenario. I'm a two front, two foot jumper, so I was able to get two feet down. I'm right handed, so I'm going right to the middle of the rim. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to go up and try to dunk that no matter what. Uh, All right, it was a great, great pass by Jason. <laughs> great, great. Listen, I'm just so happy you gave us that moment because that's gonna be a moment that when we replayed for years. I remember being at a bar. Okay, I'm not sure. Did you ever eat that skinny mics uh, yeah. in Fort? Yeah, so right we were at the port. Right, yeah. So there was like a Gila's watching party that day. And I just remember like one of the bartenders or the waiters being like, yeah, Gabe Norwood's never going to pay for another beer in this bar ever again. <laughs> so you should definitely go to Skinny Mike's yeah. when everything is I gotta, okay again. I got to max that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So the question, Gabe, uh, and we'll have Marvin Ram answer this too. Like what lowest price should that Gabe Norwood dunk go in the marketplace if ever it gets to the marketplace? Minted at a, only a thousand at a thousand. A thousand, yeah. Man, because I need I I need at least three for my sons. So that could be a good retirement fund for them. So I'd say, <laughs> uh, dang. I mean, I, it'd have to be right around you know maybe maybe five five thousand right around five maybe. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I like I how know. you're so I... shy saying that too. <laughs> like, I, I'm a, I'm a, I mean, I, it sounds. I like round numbers, so I wasn't gonna say anything. Just five. Yeah. Nice five. That's my number, so I'll say five. Let's ask the analyst, Mar Brown. What do you guys think? So, uh, what I plan to do with it is, uh, if we're only gonna release like one thousand, is to release it by in tranches. So, so we're going to release it slowly. Like we, we we're going to control the supply and test the market out. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, but I'm sure there's a huge market here, like in the Philippines, like uh, yeah. how basketball crazed the people are. Right. Like, I'm sure there's like a huge market. Like uh, when I first got into Top Shot, like I was uh, talking to grab drivers. Because uh, they're like uh, the only people I get to interact with. Like, uh, right, right. Yeah, so like I, I was just sh showing them uh, top shot in my phone just to uh, get uh, insights from them. Uh, yeah. And then um, these guys are like willing to like um, buy moments. Like, um, right. like during that time, that was like uh, early February, like a Jordan Clarkson moment was like selling for $5. Mm. So like uh one gra grab driver was like saying like like uh he was willing to buy one right. yeah so like uh right. just that alone like uh like gives me like uh like confidence uh, yeah like it gives me confidence that mm. uh it can scale yeah right yeah um Ram go what's your before I ask Gabe the next question Ram, give us a number Ram a number yeah lowest price for that Gabe Norwood them. Oh, you know, the Philippines. I know that, obviously, the incomes are a bit different between the Philippines and the U.S. That's pretty clear. But we've seen uh, how many people are in, a little plug, how many people are in NBA Top Shot Philippines, right? There's what? 3,000. 3,000. And a lot of our users, they're willing to, I'm sure, spend at least 1,000 for that kind of dunk. And yeah. probably even a lot higher. If, you know, 1,000. Like, yeah. There's 5,000 edition moments. So that thing's just gonna escalate, and I don't know if this is going to bleed into your question now, but that's what I was thinking now that um, Marv mentioned it. There's this possibility one day that you can have something, not exactly top shot, like but top maybe shot. Not, um, not sure if you're, I don't know what platform you use to trade your cryptos, but then 
Binance has recently announced that they're uh, getting into NFTs as well. There are other local people who have already said in other groups that they're looking to start things that are NFT related. Maybe right now it's more of art, but maybe, who knows, it could shift towards something like Top Shot. So for you, that there's like that market there where it could be PBA, it could be all basketball here. I mean, imagine UAAP, how many people are from these top tier schools, the alumni who just, you know, They keep yeah. shouting at the top of their lungs at these games. <laughs> Do you think that it's going to move to a point where these guys are paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to get a UAAP big moment? Yeah, I Probably. mean, like, yeah, I, I don't see why not. In terms, I don't know the the price on it, but just the the availability and the, the chance of it becoming big, I, I think it's, like Naveen was saying, it's just kind of more of a matter of when than, than if. Yeah. Um, And I don't know it would be exciting. I'll probably be retired by the time it really is in full swing. But hopefully, I mean, it can get going here soon. <laughs> yeah, if one of those moments has the has the phrase of Magoo where he goes like, "My God, I'm on fire!" That would be good. That would be so good. Yeah. Top shot. The the Hornets commentary. The commentary. Yeah. 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 yeah but listen, so- um, in. In Dapper and Top Shot, they only take like a five percent marketplace transaction fee, right? I'm not exactly sure we're gonna get the limit at five percent if we do it. Here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, true. Uh, my next question, Gabe. One is, um, I know that you interact with guys from the PBA community too. You guys keep in touch. So, uh, is there like a growing number of like PBA users who are getting into NBA Top Shot? And number two, since we've been talking about it already, what do you think? would be the steps needed to be made for the PBA if not now maybe down the line to eventually have like its own version of Top Shot well there's definitely a, a growing community um, with with NBA Top Shot within, within uh, PBA players you know uh, it, it's, it's been the talk I was talking about it just today with a, with a couple of guys and it's, it's been a conversation I probably had maybe once or twice a week you know in the last last month or so just in terms of you got guys kind of just curious guys who, you know i'm on there but i'm not doing anything yet you know how does it work just the the, the usual back and forth um, but in terms for here uh, you know I, i think it's just a matter of us getting going uh, and and really the like like ram was mentioning if, if the nba really does push it and, and kind of market it and to where it's it's one of those One of those things that just lands on the right person's mind, on their heart, on their ears uh, to get things going. You know how it is. Once once you get the idea and, and the ball starts rolling, you have the right connections to make it happen. Um, it, it seems like something that can that can happen quick, especially with kind of like the the peg is already out there. You know you know how to do it, and how it can work. Right. Cool. Yeah, and I think like James Yap and the like, Chris Manchero moment would sell out real quick. quick. You guys know what? <laughs> quick. Quick. <laughs> quick. quick. Marvin, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, so, like with regards to Top Shot, like uh, we all know how big the sports memorabilia, memorabilia market is, right? Like uh, physical cards alone account for like six to seven billion dollars, right? Like uh, NBA 2K, like they gross over like a billion dollars in revenues annually right yeah. so like that alone like uh, if people spend that much annually in like uh, 2k in cards like in jerseys on like tickets like a league pass right so, like there's a huge yeah. market like uh like can you just imagine uh, a wanted reaches like uh, the chinese market right like 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 other uh, basketball crazed countries Like uh, it might uh, take some time with China because uh, there are uh, uh, like uh, barriers to entry. Like uh, right, right. Shout out Daryl Morey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, but uh, as said, uh, like, uh, sorry. Like as we notice, like uh, the NBA is like growing globally. Like uh, mm-hmm. it's catching on to soccer. Yeah. Uh, like uh, so. Like uh, the way they advertise their superstars, like as opposed to other sports, uh, or like uh, more team centric, right? Yeah. And uh, in basketball, like you see the faces of like these players, like as compared to, like football, 
like uh, most football and baseball players like uh people don't probably notice them right because yeah. uh yeah. they're wearing helmet or like uh yeah, like, yeah yeah so um so like, so like those things so i think uh it will play a factor in the long run and, right uh and like top shot gives us an opportunity like to enter like uh to buy like the first uh the first series like uh yeah like going back in time like to buy like uh a michael jordan like a clear michael jordan right so like right. Uh, yeah comic so, like, books so, and so, everything yeah. yeah yeah so like um if we believe in the platform uh i think uh like and uh we're only putting in money we can afford to lose right so like uh i think people should be patient and uh hold the, long term yeah like yeah. um when bitcoin first started like uh there were a lot of doubters right and as it, as it uh gained more traction uh since it is uh since bitcoin is finite uh mm. you see the price uh increase and it, and it has been volatile like throughout the years right so right yeah Definitely, and I think it's good that we discuss the whole possible PBA NFTs thing because if that idea eventually materializes, the four of us here we will be pioneers of that. Uh, but also today, I'm happy to say that I invited Gabe to join the NBA Top Shot Philippines Facebook group, which is at three thousand members, which is also going to give Gabe an opportunity to see how like me deep some people really are into NBA Top Shot <laughs> here. Uh, but Gabe, it's a great community because. Honestly, and I'm not just saying this because I'm part of it, uh, because people kind of associate me sort of like with Top Shot Philippines now, and same for Marvin and Ram. It's really just incredibly positive, and I think that yeah. more than the whole platform itself is what has shocked me the most about it. I remember when I was covering the NBA All Star uh, Weekend this season, I was asking these players about NBA Top Shot, and I would tweet what they say. I didn't really expect it would blow off, you know. I'd expect, oh, maybe some people who are into Top Shot will watch it, you know, reply something. It just took off because people are so excited, so positive. And I know Gabe, you personally too. You mentioned to me that the community is one of the parts that has made it so exciting for you. So, just what are your thoughts about the overall Top Shot community and Is this like? Are you surprised yourself about how optimistic and positive it's been? I think it's a little bit of the sign of the times, right? Just what this last 13 months has been for the world, um, especially since we're still in it, <laughs> unlike a lot of the world. Um, I think we're all craving community. We're all craving conversation and, and craving some type of, of dialogue and, and common denominator, right? And on this. Instance, it happens to the NBA Top Shot. Um, shot, sorry, but you know, for some it's cards, some it's my wife and and talking plants with you. It, it's 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 kind of like just a sign of the times. You know what I mean? I, I really think that's what it is, and it's one of those things that I hope continue that way once you know what I mean. Things do kind of get back to normal, or um, you know, we are kind of going out and about a little bit more and get more busy with our lives to where. You're still able to come back to this community. It's still positive. It's not, you know, just a bunch of hate and, and people kind of scheming. But it, it can be as pure as it can be. For sure, for sure. Uh, Ram, was there something you wanted to ask Gabe before we get to the ending segment? Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Maybe pulling back to one of the things you mentioned earlier, right? One of the cool things that they brought in a few weeks ago was that rookie badges, and I was wondering. Yeah. For you, are there other badges you want to see? Because right now there are like four different kinds of badges. Do you want a badge for like game winner badge or a bubble badge? Yeah, like I thought a game winner badge would be would be cool. Or like even like I I think in this next pack they have is it Zion's thousand point? I think it's, it's on there. So like even like a patch for like those type of milestones, like a milestone patch. I, I think that'd be pretty cool. Whether it was you know. If you play our, or even I like All Star Game Pass or something like something like that, but <laughs> any type of any type of, of patch to where you know it kind of adds you know a little bit of a, a, a pop to the moment, I, I think could be cool. Just as long as not too much. You don't want you want you want to keep it clean. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right, Gabe. So before we let you go here, we are going to play a little segment. Uh, Marvin's going to be done to ask you the question. It right. is called um, "Hold, Give, or Sell." 
So the stipulations are pretty straightforward. He is going to give you three moments of three different players uh, doing three different things. And we are going to ask you to choose, like we said, to give, hold, or sell. So Marvin, okay. feel free to ask him. Uh, Gabe, uh, like uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you like Jamaran, Devin Booker, and LeBron. So these are all the S1 moments. So for Jamaran, it's his uh, top hot debut. It's his dunk over Aaron Baines. Yeah, so that's his first option. Okay. So for Devin Booker, it's his game winner against the Clippers when he faked out Kawhi and he turned around and uh, shot over like uh, PG and Kawhi. Yeah. yeah Was that so, in the bubble? In the bubble? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in the bubble. Yeah. And okay. uh, the last one is the LeBron Kobe dunk. Ooh. Yeah. So. Dang. So, gift, hold, sell. Yeah. Man. All right, I think I would. I think I. I might go right in that order because I could buy a lot with that bronze. <laughs> as a, for sure, for sure. I, I could buy a lot yeah. with that bronze. So I, yeah. I might have to sell the like, bronze uh, off of uh, yeah. a smart money move. Yeah, um, definitely. And uh, reallocate. Right? You know, I can move that around a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I probably. Dang. I can't believe I said that though, but I'd probably sell the Braun. I would gift the Booker, and I'd hold on to Ja. I, I, I'd hold on to Ja. Um, I like that. I think that's a good. Uh, I think that's a good financial decision. <laughs> because also, if you sell the Braun and you start to reallocate, you're not gonna end up using all of it. You're gonna get a keep. Oh, for, for sure. Too. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. Right now, that LeBron moment, the lowest ask. Is eleven thousand wow. dollars. Yeah, I mean, yeah, solid. yeah. So uh, if you sell it, you can uh, definitely reallocate. I can definitely, and probably I can definitely buy the game. I can buy hey. my moment from FIBA. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Can, I, for can sure. I tell you guys something that's gonna piss all of you off? What? Don't tell me you had that moment. No, no, I did. Oh, I wish. Uh, that's you sold it early. That LeBron dunk, which is eleven grand now, is probably like thirty dollars at one point. If wow. we had like gotten yeah, yeah, stock yeah. up like one month before we did, we would have had like what five or six of those. Like I lay awake at night sometimes thinking, what if I got into Top Shot in twenty twenty? Um, oh my god! <laughs> I actually know the guy who owns the number twenty four LeBron Metallic uh, Kobe oh, wow. tribute. Yeah. He's he's Filipino. Wow. Yeah, he's from Palawan. Yeah. So uh, oh, that's crazy. Like he was able to uh, buy that. Like so, like uh, I'm really impressed. Like how uh, wow. forward thinking he was. Like uh, buying that cereal. Like cereal. Like targeting it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So wait, like, that guy has got retirement money and lives in Palawan. Seriously? Um, oh, man. Uh, man, man, man. Yeah. Man, man. Can you imagine, like, though? Can you imagine, like, buying a beach house one day, Gabe, and being, like, you know, telling your wife, so, yeah, it's off cost, right? For this. Yeah. I saw like, that moment. Like, uh, <laughs> so, before we call it a wrap, we're going to ask Gabe something that we are going to ask every person we interview. Since uh, Top Shot based on what Dapper is trying to promote is a long-term whole collector's kind of vibe. We are thinking years down the line instead of just yeah. months or weeks. So Gabe, if I put you in the spot now and ask you three years from now, how big is Top Shot? What does Top Shot look like? What's your guess? I mean, I'm guessing it'd be huge just with the, the move that's kind of happening, you know, digitally, virtually. It'd be cool to where it was tied into some type of physical component. You know what I mean? If it came with a, you know, you hit this moment and it also comes with a jersey that gets sent to you or a meet and greet opportunity, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, I don't see why that wouldn't happen. Uh, you know, that teams already have those promos. Why not just add it onto that? Um, but yeah, I, I could see it being huge. I, I think. You know, there's enough people supporting the platform. The NBA stamp is already on it. For me, that's, like I said earlier, I think that's a proof. That's proof that, you know, they they find value in in the platform and 
and pushing it forward. So I'm sure they won't just give up on it anytime soon. For sure, for sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was future Philippine Basketball Hall of Famer Gabe Norwood. And I'm not just talking PBA, I'm talking <laughs> Philippine basketball because this guy, what he's done for Philippine hoops, it goes beyond words. So, Gabe, from all of us, thank you for everything you've done for Philippine hoops. And no, thank bad. you also for joining us today. It was great to talk top shot with you. And the best part, I think, is it seems like you're as excited as we are, as the Always. rest of the community are, you know? <laughs> yeah. For sure. Wait yeah. for this pack drop. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, Ram, Marvin, any final words? Um, Gabe, maybe after uh, we're all vaccinated, uh, we, can, uh, we can play ball and you can you can dunk and, uh, <laughs> you can dunk on all of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Deserve one poke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make it an NFT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just tokenize. Like, uh, uh, pro versus Joe type, like a uh, kind of energy. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> That'd be funny. You know what? I could just post that video on YouTube and the monetization itself would probably be okay. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> like a uh, Philippine national player dunks on a bunch of random nerds. <laughs> yeah, that would go. <laughs> no, but yeah, Gabe, thank you so much. Marvin, Ram, thank yeah. you. I hope the rest of you have a great night. And before we go, I just want to remind everybody, wear your masks, stay at home, yes. unless you have to go out. And let's all be responsible so we can all go out and watch Gabe Duncan people again. <laughs> That's the plan. Hopefully it's soon. <laughs> Peace out, everyone. Right, Thanks for having me.